Uh, the plant is Salvia divinorum. Salvia divinorum, which some of you who are real mavens of this stuff know it. It's been in the books for 30 years. The problem was nobody knew how to get off. And so it was always carried in these lists as suspect hallucinogen. The thing is, any scientist confronted with a plant where somebody says it's a hallucinogen will test to see if it's an alkaloid. All hallucinogens, almost all, are alkaloids. So salvia divinorum, negative for alkaloids doesn't matter. It has a new unknown compound in it, now known, salvorine alpha. And the interesting thing about salvorine alpha is we have in this country what's called a structural near relatives or cogener law, which says if a compound is a structural near relative, isomer, endantiomer, or stereoisomer, of an illegal compound, then it too can be made illegal. Salvia divinorum doesn't fit this description. That means that in order to make this stuff illegal, the government will have to present medical data showing there is something wrong with it. And at this stage, nobody on earth knows the real pharmacological parameters of this compound. So here's the deal. You can grow this plant in a window box, in your apartment, in your backyard. It looks like Joe Plant. There is nothing particularly distinguishing about this plant. And if you have three or four cuttings, in six or seven months you will have more than you know what to do with. The, and, and then I'll just describe how I do it. I have not, I'm slightly chicken shit to do the pure compound, which by the way, you do 300 micrograms. Understand that what that looks like is a grain of salt. A small grain of salt is a human effective dose. It comes on so fast that you have no impression of it coming on at all. You do it, and then after a while you notice that for a long time you have been staring at something incomprehensible. <laughs> well, let me t here's how I recommend that you do it while we get the chemical thing sorted out because the chemical, it could be dangerous. It would be very easy to overdose by a factor of 10, 20, 30 and you would still just be doing a smidgen. So I say, let's honor the plants. Let's not hand the government a bunch of casualties that it can cluck over and put on national TV. You know, the bibble, 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 bibble show. Uh, Let's use the plant, and the way you do it is you grow up a batch of this stuff and get a, between 15 and 20 leaves. Remove the mid-vein with your fingernail just to lower the mass. Fold it all into a little pile. Put it in your mouth, and 20 leaves is a whopping mouthful. So basically, as much as you can get in your mouth, put it in your mouth, lie down in silent darkness, and squeeze this stuff with your jaws. Tastes like it's horrible. It's not as bad as ayahuasca, but it's horrible. But you could acquire a taste for it. <laughs> so lie down in darkness where you can see a digital watch. Uh, one of these red flashing jobs like a Kmart deal. And, and then let it don't swallow it, but just squeeze it and masticate it. At 15 minutes, by the clock, spit it out into a bowl or a Kleenex or something, and then just lie there, lie still in the darkness with your eyes closed, and look, and this is almost the key empowerment, though it's idiotic, people fail to do it, look at the back of your eyelids with the expectation of seeing something. And when you do that, after just three or four minutes, there will be what uh, we professionals call streaming, which means amoeboid 
lights of after image colors, the chartreuse and purple flowing by. And about three minutes after that, it will deepen very, very quickly into extraordinarily bizarre, uh, dare we say it, fairly DMT-like hallucinations. And it, it, it builds fast, I mean so fast, that you, there is this wonderful moment in it where you actually know real fear, which shows you that it's working. I mean, I really believe if, if, you're, if, if you take a psychedelic and you're not afraid you did too much, you didn't do enough. Uh, <clears throat> The experience then will unfold over about 45 minutes and just lie there and look. And it is beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, I'm a, a, a connoisseur of hallucination. And the, the beautiful, these deep indigo blues, these, these cerulean blues against blackness that are like neon and these amorphous Yves Tanguay kind of shapes that are moving and transforming themselves. I mean, I was amazed. I couldn't believe it. I was saying, my God, this is legal. This is legal. And it's working. And it's working. And I am, I am the hardest of the hard heads. I mean, I know people say, you know, here's Tiger, this lucidum, this will get you off. Here's this, smoke this, knick and knick, this, something. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't. It's not like that. These things are rare. But this one works. And I commend it to your attention and your friend's attention and anyone with shamanic intent. As I say, it's perfectly legal to possess, advocate the whole bit. Yes. Salvia. It's in the genus Salvia. That's the mint family. Sacred to pagans for millennia. Salvia, S-A-L-V-I-A. And then Divinorum, D-I-V-I-N-O-R-U-M, the diviner's mint. It, there's, well, yes, let me say something about this that's very interesting. Pardon me? Well, that's what I was going to talk about. It's native from Mexico, so it has no common name in English. Uh, in Spanish, it has a very interesting common name. It's called Ojos de la Pastora. Now, the eyes of the shepherdess. What a strange name. Think about it for a moment. First of all, notice that in Christian iconography, there are no shepherdesses. Period. Not one. We got shepherds. You got your shepherds there. Christmas. Not shepherdess. No. So it's called ojos de la pastora. Well, then the anthropologist who studied this, Brett Blosser, to whom we all owe a great debt. Hail Brett. Uh, naturally, these people are Tzotzil and Sotil. They're in the mountains of Oaxaca. And so he said to them, well, yes, ojos de la pastora, very interesting, but what do you call it in your language? What do you call it in Tzotzil? And they said, well, well we, we have no name for it in our language. This is very, very interesting. And if any of you have any thoughts or want to work on this, it's inconceivable if these people had used this for centuries that they would not have a local a Tzotzil name for it. So he said, why don't you have a name for it? And they said, because our grandfathers were the first to use it. And this, we do not know what to make of it. Because Salvia Divinorum is known only from this very indemnified locality in the Sierra Mazateca. Where did it come from? Has it always been there? But these Indians only discovered it 200 years ago? Did it come from somewhere else? And if so, where? Because it's never been located anywhere else on the planet. So this is a great puzzlement. And I think if we move fast enough, we psychedelicos, we pagans, we neuronauts, we magicians, if we move fast enough, this will just be moot. And this is a far more powerful thing than cannabis. 
Uh, I mean, not if you've never smoked cannabis and then you sit down and smoke the best aff there is. But as we all know, after a while, cannabis loses its ability to really catapult you into the unspeakable. The, the salvia divinorum, every time I have taken it, it's gotten better and stronger and weirder. So I think it is sent from the goddess at this time, eyes of the shepherdess, these are the eyes we should be looking through.